door, but uh, I, I think it's excessive. What's it? Yeah. Okay. I live on eighty fifth. Right. Been on in my whole life. Yeah, but do you have like a truck uh, loading? I have drone? trucks and fire. I was woken up by fire trucks this morning. Right? I know what you're saying. It's, 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 it's hard to discern. It, it's it's noisy enough, enough without that, but you know, I, I, it's well, just, my concern is that it could be cut back a little. Bit. This regulation was done for BC Richards, and that's not who's getting to take advantage of it from the sound of your. Yeah. And also, CVS is also on that block in the right. same building. They have equally large trucks. If Maybe even larger, and when they come, there are also we've noticed them out in the you know double parking while these That's much true. much smaller fresh direct trucks are hogging the. Uh, the we need obviously some enforcement, uh, but have you spoken with the management of of PC Richard at all to ask them if they can live with a shorter time, as long as they're getting the use of their their frontage? I could do that, sure. At the same time, a shorter time is the end of the problem. Is no, no, we have to get it. That's something to look at, but something needs to be addressed. On the afternoon, that was between 84th and 85th on the east side. By the Dome Garden. Yeah, by the Dome Garden. And there were no residents. They were, I mean, I don't understand. That's where they were, yeah. Yeah, and there was good And they weren't in anybody's way there. Right. Well, when first direct came to yes, yes. It seemed like they were very open to moving around and they were very sensitive to. Uh, and I think they said they wouldn't stay in one place. For, and I think for, they said that they were yeah, trying to find thing. a central place in the west side from which they could take uh, deliveries on foot, as I recall, you know, on hand truck and everything. That's what Gail was trying to get them to do, to rent a, a, like a parking spot or a storefront or something to get them. Yes. From my yes, and they said they would be amenable to that, and maybe it's time to ask them to come back. Well, yes. we're so over-rented on it. Because, you know, I mean, they're obviously paying taxes at their central location, which I think is in the Bronx or something. But they have two now. They have two now but uh, this reservation, this street reservation, is for PC Richards. It's not for them. And, yeah. and I'll be happy to ask the management of both PC Richards and CVS what are reasonable hours over the course of seven days that they each think they needed. And I can bring that back to you in the next, you know, maybe. And we'll try to get fresh direct in here again. Full board meeting. Yeah. I, I noticed that CVS is often in the evening uh, between 87 and 88. And yeah, they often set good. up, you know, even another block and, and often double parking. Yeah, so. So that suggests maybe we need all day loading zone. Oh, actually, the, <laughs> <laughs> the evening well. is the peak time on Amsterdam Avenue, and there shouldn't be. Loading in, in the EMT, not between 4 and 7 p.m. I know the DOT doesn't want that, so. Well, I'll try to get each of their actual hour, hour needs and uh, I'll report that. All right, thanks. Yeah. I would suggest, Richard, this since uh, it, it was taken care of by Gail as the council person, you'll be familiar with it, that you contact her office and also the council person, Alan Rosenthal, in the area. Yeah, Gail did when she was in council. Gail did it when she was a council member. I understand. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. She would understand you. the issue. She's been through it. Okay. Thanks. Peter. I was just going to say on the loading zones that DOT has limited hours that they allow for loading zones, and that you may not be able to get it adjusted. That shouldn't stop you from asking. Um, but just when we did loading zones on Columbus Avenue, um, there were set hours that they yeah, um, just allowed. So right. set hours. And then. What? Um, the other thing that I just wanted to remind you of is that we do have the family days coming up on June 14th, where we'll be closing Columbus between 106th and 110th, and then in September the 20th and 27th uh, on Amsterdam. And I'll make a quick plug for uh, history talk on Westside Federation for Senior Supportive Housing. Uh, they're going to talk about their history of creating uh, housing in the neighborhood. And you should know that I've looked into the issue of the lack of lighting in the bus shelter on Columbus Avenue between 109th and 110th Street, and apparently there is no power there, and so there's not going to be lighting anytime in the near future. Okay. Um, 
I don't know what we have. To, I don't know why it can't be solar powered, and maybe they use rechargeable or something. But there is no, there's no power underground there for the uh, bus shelter. Curious. Yeah, Mary and Phoebus asked me to look into that. So, um, anybody else have a qu yes, <coughs> Mr. Dooley? On the thing with Brush Direct, I had a problem with them in my neighborhood. I was able to push them out. They just went somebody. They just went somewhere else. Yeah. They do what they want when they want, how they want. They're really nasty. And they create a huge problem, especially early in the morning. I don't know if you can put pressure on the police to get them out because they do operate illegally everywhere. I don't know why the police. We're going to ask them to come back. Um, the person that we had up here before us was not nasty. <clears throat> um, I can't obviously talk about individual delivery um, folks, but th you, these you people. Know, I got pictures of video where they're holding their hand across, holding spaces. You come in and out. I mean, I was able to get rid of them off of my block, but it's happening to the problem too, and it's, you know, people just get so disgusted. Yeah, we'll look into it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, anybody else before we move into our agenda? Okay. Thank you all. Um, Daisy, it's, believe it or not, after a horrible winter, it's going to be Manhattan Hedge again, huh? I know, I know. Yay. Okay. So I had prepared a beautiful presentation. However, um, technology doesn't want to work with us right now. You point it that oh. way, and I'll point this one this way. Okay, perfect. Oh yeah. wow! <laughs> you're amazing. We can't. Make this, we're missing the connector. Everyone see that? Oh, for Mac. You did. Do you want to point to the audience? Oh, point to the audience. Yeah. Okay. Unless you want to. All right, so here we go. So thank you again for allowing me to present today on Manhattan Henge. Um, so this is the fifth year we're actually doing the event, uh, third year that we're asking for a street closure. So for those of you that don't know, this is what Manhattan Henge pretty much is, the next slide. Um, it is when the sun aligns directly on this Manhattan Street grid line. Um, it's a beautiful, opportunity to take pictures but it's also very dangerous because actually people block traffic so a lot of the different streets that are popular to see manhattan henge are 42nd street 23rd 34th 42nd 57th and now 79th street and what's the common theme there they're all wide streets <laughs> they're all wide streets um so the museum actually puts together an educational program around manhattan henge so we like to do this for our audiences but also for the community uh people have seemed to really flock to this event so our request is, next slide, uh, to do the event on Monday, July 13th. The street closure would only be from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And again, it's on 79th Street between Amsterdam Avenue and Columbus Avenue. Um, next slide. So this is a couple of images of non-permitted crosstown streets. As you can see, people do block the traffic. It becomes very dangerous. Uh, we had experienced this earlier on where once we were done with our program, People just flock onto the street. So it really became a dangerous situation. Next slide. So these are real images from last year of our Manhattan Henge on 79th Street. As you can see, nice and safe. Next slide. If you look further down, it's kind of hard to see on this, but between Amsterdam and Broadway, people are blocking traffic. Um, so uh, it's definitely drawing a lot of crowds. The police, the police were in great attendance. Um, they were very helpful. They yeah, done fantastic. And we got fantastic. the buses rerouted for, for that period of time. So. Last year it went but, by but smoothly. But Amsterdam Broadway was a problem. Right. And you can see it in that image. And next slide, another image of Manhattan Henge. And then last year we were fortunate, next slide, that we had um, Manhattan Henge and also Moon Henge. So pretty much when the sun set, the moon rose towards the east, yeah, which was a nice, a nice little treat. I don't think we're going to have it this year again. Um, I've asked Dr. Tyson to see if this will happen again. So we're waiting to hear on that. Uh, next slide. He's so connected. Can he just make it happen? I know, right? He has those powers, cosmic powers. Um, so again, we're asking for another permit to close the street. It's two hours. It's a safe environment. Um, NYPD is present. They've been extraordinarily helpful in this endeavor. So has the community board. So with that, we'd we'll love to hear your support. This year? No, the there's no, year, we, want to do the we want to do the same thing. There's no yeah. acoustics. There's no stage. It's just a closed street. Um, we haven't announced a street closure in any of our own programming. I don't know if that's something that the community wants us to continue and we can. 
um, so we don't make it public and it's more intimate for us as well. There was an educational program just preceding Manhattan Correct. in the uh, in the building. Are they going to do that again? In the planet. Every year we do it. Yep. Correct. That's a, a, a museum event. It's a $15 event. Why wouldn't you want to announce it? Um, we didn't announce it the first time because we weren't sure how many people were actually going to show up on the streets. As it is, we have about 400 to 500 people that actually come to that block. If we, and if it's clear, there was movement. There was movement, but if we were to promote it, if Dr. Tyson were to tweet it, you know, there's, there's real concern as far as numbers of people that could just show up. We've all heard this before. Is there anybody in the audience who's not familiar with what Manhattan Hand is? Can we just tell you, like, can we give a couple of sentences to just explain sure. what that is, Daisy? It literally is that when the sun actually aligns on the Manhattan street grids, on the crosstown streets. So you see it watching west. And you can see it from other streets. You can see it from other streets, it's right? Just that because the wider the street, wider street and, the, and it's angled down. You can see this. Hill. So the, the, the hill, it, it's, it, there's a big hill at, at Columbus heading down to, towards Amsterdam. Correct. And so if you're on no, the hill, you get the sense. Right. So this is the street. This is the top of the hill. hill. At that point, that viewpoint is very advantageous to see the actual sun coming down. It happens twice a year. It happens four times a year. So the first one is going to be on May 29th. The second one is May 30th. Well, that's oh, okay. sort of the same. It goes along. Right. Yeah. Two days. Uh, uh, July 13th and then July 12th, right before. Yeah. So um, you're you're asking for um, for the July one. July 13th. So you we never, you, know, you you really bank on it being good weather. On we do. Road. Yeah, we. You don't do a let's try it for the first hinge and then if that's not beautiful, we'll do the try second one. We don't. We don't also. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the museum is open every day of the week. Uh, we we also don't want to inconvenience the community to have the street closure sure. twice. I mean, it was that one year where we really thought it was going to rain and then turned out to be beautiful. So we just don't want to inconvenience anyone. Just the last year it was in the May time frame instead of the July. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there's any science to why, and you had a, you had a beautiful day. Um, is there any science to why you're picking May instead of I mean, I think it's because event? of um, the museum events happening at the at the institution at this point as far as the Rose Center. So that's why that was the most convenient day for us to actually get in the person to come and speak about it. So it's not a hard issue. So really no. I think in 29th, it's kind of a real It is. But that doesn't stop anyone from going doesn't stop anyone from blocking traffic, yeah. right? We're just not we're encouraging it. You'll, you'll see the sun right down the streets on the 29th, 30th, 28th, 30th of May. 28th? No, 29th and 30th. 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 Yeah, it's yeah. Really pretty much on any street of West Side. And before I came here tonight, last week, we uh, sent around a letter to all the residents on 79th Street to let them know that we were going to present in case there's any issues or concerns. I mean, last year we got three complaints and it was mostly about parking, which we have no say in. Um, it's really up to the police department if they want to have the cars parked or not. Yeah, it seemed fine last year. Did anyone have any uh, further comments? Uh, I know what this is. I'd like to make a motion to approve <laughs> <laughs> at the street closing on um, um, 79th Street between Columbus and Amsterdam on Monday, July 13th. That's how many hours of 7 and 9 p.m. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, and you'll be able to help us with MTA again, sure. perhaps? Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, can we have any members in favor? How many members? Oh, you know what? It's Tuesday, July 14th is Bastille Day. Right. That's everybody. That is everybody. Uh, Nine committee board members in favor? Two zero. 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 And, and two, and two non zero. Uh, non committee board members. Roberta. Thank you so much. Thank thank you. I'm sorry that technology you. didn't work. No, it's okay. Thank we made it work, and thank you for trying. Yep. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, is, is the applicant for the new stand proposed for 93rd and Columbus present? No, um, 
the office had a difficult time reaching the applicant. Um, if he doesn't show by the end of this meeting, we'll do a, uh, uh, a resolution to disapprove without prejudice until he does appear, okay? But we'll give them the chance to appear just in case they are late. Um, and now I think for what all you folks are here for, which is a request by the Edward J. Reynolds School to secondarily name the Southeast, by the way, it's wrong on your agenda sheet. It's the Southeast corner of Broadway and West 103rd Street, Norman Rockwell Place. Just on three on your, your agenda cross out where it says West 92nd. Yes, that's the start of Broadway and 103rd Street. Um, wait, wait, sorry. Okay. Okay. Number three, just cross out where it says West 92nd and 93rd Street. Okay. 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 So just, just, just give us your name for the record. Hi, my name is Renee Broadway Mills. I'm a teacher at West Side High School. It's Edward A. Reynolds. Westside High School. Some of you may be familiar with Edward Reynolds. He was quite active in the community. Um, this is my PM class that we have been working on this project of Norman Rockwell Place. So we're called the Norman Rockwell Place Committee. So um, we have our presentation for you uh, about one o'clock in secondary school. And um, Girls, you might turn around so they can see your shirt. Oh, oh hair. <laughs> hair. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And, and, uh, school. and it, yeah, so we're made at school. Yeah, yeah. screen print. Yeah, trying to do the so it's NR on the shirts. <laughs> 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 um, oh. And we're just going to, you know, Elisa is going to pass out some flyers that we had when we first started this idea of going and finding out what we had to do in order to uh, get a secondary science to the kids design, the posters, uh, the flyers we had in Spanish and English. Um, thank you. We also had uh, on our petition in front of SRM. Oh, sure. Uh, the kids designed everything. Wow. Uh, go getters. So we're going to start our presentation. <coughs> and I start first. So, greetings, Community Board 7. We are the Norman Rockwell Place Committee under the direction of Renee Mills at Westside High School. So I'll have my first speaker. In 1894, the great American illustrator and painter, Norma Percival, Percival Rockwell was born at 206 West 103rd Street. Edward A. Reynolds Westside High School is on a mission to have a secondary street sign, Norma Rockwell Place, added to the current West 103rd Street sign. White Armour Rockwell, he was an artist who made America recognize the problem we live with as titled and his portrait of segregation in the Ruby Bridges painting. This painting is is unknown to the White House requested by President Obama. Remember the four freedom speeches by FDR when World War II was approaching? Rockwell was so inspired by FDR's speech that he painted the four freedoms and the prince sold war bonds to support the war effort. The importance of these freedoms should be revisited in our troubled world today. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from fear, and freedom from want. Think about it. He was a man who promoted brotherhood as in the painting. Going to others, which is a mosaic presently in the United Nations. A painting of humanity that reminds us that we are equal, though different, in a world that respect pluralism. He also forced America to face the shame of racism and prejudice in our society as illustrated in the depiction of the 1965 murder activist Shaney Goodman and Schwerner called Murder in Mississippi. He was able to reflect the joys and sorrows of American life in a way unique only to our world. The students at Edward A. Reynolds West Side High show their devotion to this project by designing flyers and creating a petition to inform the voting community about their project. On November 6, 2014, students gave up their day off to canvas the voting poll site at their school, 140 West 102nd Street. 
to get signatures for the petition. They collected over 400 signatures. Thus far, our school and community have been supportive of this project. We are fortunate to have the support and a staff member from the Norman Rockwell Museum in Stockbridge, Massachusetts with us, curator and director of education, Mr. Tom Bailey. Thank you for listening. And Tom, if you want to. Scott, it was quite moving. Thank you for the opportunity to be here and to speak in front of the board. Uh, some of the students came up to the Norman Rockwell Museum to experience this art firsthand. And I am fortunate to see a lot of students that come to the museum. But I have to say it was really very exciting to hear students talking about Norman Rockwell with such pride, but more importantly, talking about the community with such pride. I think most people, if you ask them on any street corner in any town, where is Norman Rockwell from? The last place in their mind would be New York City. But thanks to these students, there might be more people that realize that Norman Rockwell has its place in New York City and that New York City uh, embraced Rockwell when he lived here. Can I just get your last name? Daly, P-A-L-Y. That's great. And anybody, have, how long did Norman Rockwell live after his birth in New York City? Or during what portions of his life did he live here in the city or on the west side? Can we grab that one today? Sure. <laughs> he lived, the beginning of his life in New York City was born uh, in the, on the west side and in the neighborhood where the folks go to school and started his interest in art as a young man in that uh, shabby brownstone as he described it. And it was the community around him that embraced this idea of this young man being an artist that made it possible, and that was your community. So he basically grew up on the road there. Until yep. what age? In, until his early 206 20s. West 103, you yep. said, was the first place. Which is now 210. It's right. the building 210. Um, have you inquired at all with the, with the owner of what is now 210 um, whether they would um, Think about having a plaque on the building to commemorate Mr. Rockwell. Uh, I haven't, but maybe that's next year. No, that was friend. brought up in class, and a student said, "Yeah, well, if we get that stuff, we need to put a plaque up there." Like, you no, know, and the next step would be to we approach. Because if we, have, if if the committee and the board as a whole approves this secondary street naming request, that's the southeast corner of 102 at Broadway, and he was actually born on it. West 103rd Street, west of Broadway, right? Right. So, right on that corner. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, so it's right where the, actually where the subway stop is, yeah. there at 103rd, and yeah. on the southeast yeah, but corner, because the, the, the building itself is on the southeast side of 103rd. So, right off of Broadway. Originally, we thought there was Amsterdam, because every text was Amsterdam and, and 103rd. And then knowing that we were doing the petitions, we'd have to go to city council. Now that I said, you know, I told the museum, I need a real address. And that was 206, which is now the 210 yeah, building. Sure. How, how long were you living in public state? I don't know, formative years? I mean, yeah, it's formative years. And most people, when you think about formative years, you think about people maybe getting into what they might be interested in later on in life. But Rocco, from the time he was a young boy, was drawing, and his mother and his grandmother were encouraging him. So as he sat in that building, again, in your neighborhood, that's what really created Norman Rockwell that we know today. And again, just a quick reminder, if you think about Norman Rockwell, and I hope all of you do, um, you don't necessarily think about New York City. I think this is a great step forward to get Norman Rockwell connected back to the city that uh, that he really loved. And he also worked in- I'm just trying to, when did he move out of that building? When did his family actually move out of that building? Do you have any dates? We anything? don't have an exact date exactly when he moved out of that building. And we do know that his family moved around a little bit. Um, his father worked in a textile mill. So they, they weren't very, very wealthy. So oftentimes they would move from boarding house to boarding house. And, trying to make ends meet, um, as all of us do. And then he ended up moving to uh, Westchester and lived in a Merrimack in New Rochelle. But he kept his connections in New York, the uh, Hotel des Artistes. He had studio space there, uh, along with um, Duchamp and all the other artists that were there. Art Students League, uh, he was connected with them. Yep. Uh, two questions, sorry, maybe three. 
Um, what does the high school have a Twitter feed that I could be tweeting this on? Okay. No. Uh, our, I got some. Ava is our parent coordinator. Um, you can know that. <coughs> um, and is there are there um, other claims to fame in this corner, of this neighborhood that we should be balancing? Not at, at this corner that I know of. I, I know across the street is, is Bogart's secondary sign, which I saw be great, you know, Norman on one too. side and Humphrey on the other. <laughs> you know. yeah, we're all in person and Yes. <laughs> so any others? I think that was it. Thanks. Peter, you think we could have get the Bloomingdale History Group to do a little dig on this location and maybe... Uh... We've been mentioning um, the wrong building for about 15 years mm. on our historical walking tours. We'll um, check out Westside High School. We'll set but we've now, um, <laughs> over the past two years, we actually had to realize That's that we had to do some new on their So, but yes, it's mentioned um, on our monthly walking tours. Is that, do you have it as 103rd in Amsterdam? Is that the one? That's uh, the most we common have it reference. as 102 in Amsterdam. And we had someone that came, that signed a petition that lived in the neighborhood and he swore up and down, no, this Thank is, this is it. I said, but you know what, I'm, I'm going to find yeah, out. We're going to get those sources straight. Yeah. So, you know, we, we we've, have we've that now. Research mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We, we had it wrong. Yeah, because so. actually I think 102 is where Gershwin's mm -hmm. studio well, they, they've got a number of studios. They they moved around a lot. Oh, yeah. um, any further discussion on this? Rich, yeah, when was the brownstone knocked down for the uh, bigger building that's there now? Um, I know that building that's there now. It, it's there's something about 1945 um, with that building, but I don't know what was there previously in in my search. That, but I know something happened with that space in 1945. Mm. So, and it's a fairly, and, and the exterior of it is is what we call fairly modern, you know, kind of look to it. But it's it's probably a building that took a three, uh, you know, tenement style building. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd like to propose a resolution that we approve the secondary name on the corner on the sign. Any seconds? Second. 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 I missed it. We did a Okay, all in favor? I think she should. I think Isaac was in favor too. Isaac, Isaac. Oh, as an adult, he lived on 67th Street. So that's, 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 that's nine. That's nine. Isaac would have been for it, but he, he, like, he raised his hand as he walked out. He did raise his hand. Okay. We'll make it the same. And is it, I'm sorry, is it 102 or 102? Can I just get the rest of the vote? One second. In favor? Non committee of the vote. Two. Two. Okay, great. What was the question, Sue? The address is going to be Broadway and West 103 or 102. Southeast corner. In the forties when my father worked for 20th Century Fox, Norman Rockwell did some ad some uh, paintings that were used as ads. And I believe those were donated to the museum. <laughs> What were the images? Sorry, I couldn't The 20th Century Fox. Norman Rockwell oh. did some. Um, Stagecoach? Well, he did a few things for um, 20th Century Fox that were used as, in, in, as ads for movies. And those um, paintings were donated, the original paintings were donated to the museum. Uh, might have been Song of Bernadette. Song of Ber Amberson. Definitely Song of Bernadette. And the um, Magnificent Amberson. And, yes, and. Um, there was one other. And Song of Bernadette, the actress, won an Academy Award. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. 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 it's, it's a so great so thing. Let, let's, let's just get this correct. This is the southeast corner of Broadway and 103, yeah. right? Yeah. Southeast corner. 
Okay, I keep hearing 102 talks about it. For anybody, for anybody who can, get up to West, is it West Stockbridge or Stockbridge? I'm Stockbridge. Mm -hmm. Stockbridge yeah. at that yes. location, okay? Stockbridge on Route 41, and it's a wonderful museum, and you can really go in and get a fantastic education about what Rockville had to say about American society. Uh, very surprising uh, and enlightening. I have a question and a comment. The question is, um, what is the process for getting a plaque on the building? And is that in the works as well? So I think that's significant for people that, to walk by and see. That would have been our next step to work on that. But the first thing was, you know, I have students. I, I've had, uh, I've been in this process since uh, 2013 with different groups of students all the time. These young ladies are my newest group so everybody is getting oriented and and being a part of it we have some people who've been with us for a while but the whole idea is to work i didn't know i had to come to a board meeting because i took something uh, a form that said city council and then uh, we had to get the petition so you know we had the petitions on the 400 signatures to file i thought that's all i had to do until i spoke to penny ryan he said oh no my dear you've got to meet with us and i have city council people you know waiting and telling us oh this so the plaque i think is great and that certainly came up in class and another thing that my school would like to be a part of was to, is to take that 103rd street station and do mosaics with Norman Rockwell Place and scenes of the that neighborhood. Um, that is our. That would be fabulous. Be so my my comment is uh, just commending you for your thoroughness and yeah uh, the presentation. I I actually would have voted against because I think you know, we have so many great people in the neighborhood. We can't have a, a sign on every street, but your presentation was so impressive. That you want us all over. Thank yeah. you. And they work hard, and the whole idea is, you know, when they did the, when we had the petition to signing on their day off, and they came in anyway, and spent all day doing <coughs> that. Um, the community didn't know us. They they had never spoken to the the students at the school because when you come into vote, you just come in, go downstairs, and you vote. <coughs> but this was the first interaction that they had with the students at that school, and. You know, and, and they had some rough customers, and people were just totally willing. But just to have that community exchange is important as, as a, a lesson in civics. I mean, to be a part of this, and that they can experience coming here, you know, working really hard and going through a process of something and having positive results is what kids need today. And I do commend them for their, their commitment to be here and for the Norman Rockwell Museum sending Tom down, you know, to be with us, to, to support us in this effort. Um, and, and I'd have to say I'm, I'm just uh, thrilled with, um, you know, what young people are doing. And it's also our intention that every secondary street name get listed on Community Board 7's website. So there's a little information about each of the honored people. So people don't see it. You know, not everybody knows who Norman Rock. We all do, but. Right, right. Yeah. And also, you should also know, we, we don't rubber stamp secondary street names. You've turned out a yeah. lot of them. So. On it. so, and you know, the process doesn't stop here. Uh, <clears throat> this goes to our full board. Yes. And, Thank yeah, you. And so you have a chance to, you don't have to do the whole dog and pony show. And, and, and the, but if you'd the, like to. No, we'd love to have you guys come. <laughs> the, the, on the plaque, the there is a fund that Gail, Gail Brewer's office could be helpful because Gail Brewer, which was the council rep, was very involved in getting plaques. There's a woman who's a historian, and they, you know, you may see them on some buildings. There's like a beautiful. Um, yeah, I've seen them on. Okay. But the approval for the plaque is really simple. You need to get the building owner to say, give the green light. It's that simple. That's all. That's, 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 that's the first thing you need. And then you need and then That's the easiest thing. That's the easiest part. Then you can get the And then get Kale to probably find for it. Yes. Thank you all for Thank coming. You. This is Thank really you. Thank you. And uh, you know who you are if you're here. Bring that word to us. Say your name. Okay, we're going to hear it quickly. Um, my name is Betty Stella. I'm Mila Estrella. My name is Amber Smith. My name is Delaney Gonzalez. My name is Eliza Nibiru. 
Thank you. 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 Thank you.
was timed so that it, it allowed you to speed and make the light, and that's another thing that we thought should be changed. Those things were not addressed in the Lincoln Square plan at all. Okay. Uh, the ponding was addressed, um, some of the crossing issues were addressed, and the signal light conflict at 65th and Columbus were addressed. But these are things that we saw that were not addressed, and we want them to address them. So, there are a few things missing that weren't addressed by the plan, like like the uh, the sidewalk extension outside the subway entrance. No, no, I'm talking about the whole list. Oh yeah, okay. Let's go through the list and we'll get to them. We'll get to whatever you think's missing. We uh, we did this to the best. So I don't have to put this in the minutes. No, no, we we no, we have the list. You don't have to write. I'll just write any addition. Can, can we post this on the website? Sure, we can. As soon as we hear that everyone yeah. is satisfied with, with the, mm -hmm. yeah, now, there may be a few things missing. The uh, the Riverside Drive recommendations, which you have on this separate sheet, that that's under your agenda. Here, okay. All of these things we the walking tour mm -hmm. uh, showed that we needed to do. Calm down, calm. Um, the raised table at the 95th Street exit, and of course, what's not on this sheet is the request to have southbound traffic on the parkway right. all traffic on exiting exit at 96th street and not 95th street right. that we of course that is not just city dot i'm afraid that's going to be state dot as well uh, you know assembly member rosenthal thought was happy with it and then he's six and said 96. yes we want all traffic to exit the parkway at 96th yes that's not only that's not only. no no that, that that that's not on this sheet but right. that's something we resolved in addition right. you know we don't, we don't have here is uh the, the uh no right turns on on uh on red that's in the, it's on the, it's on the, it's on the list oh, okay. that's actually on it's the last one on the list. It's the last one on, on this page. There it is. <laughs> yes, that's, since you brought it up, Linda, that is something that even the commissioner thought was a great idea, but hasn't been done yet. Right, so Linda, you can't bring it up until after you can't get to bring up this item. Yeah. 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 My bad. I stick up. Okay, so everybody remembers these Riverside Drive recommendations. Yes, yes. Um, Gorgeous. Okay, terrific. Um, we also, in the in the wake of the tragedy at 97th and West End, in addition to something that DOT has addressed, which is to change the sequencing of, of traffic lights as you proceed west on 97th Street so that you can't speed, there is a problem at 97th and West End and 96th and West End still, which is if you make the light at 97th Street, if you speed, you can make the light at 96 and turn westward and onto the parkway. We want that ability to not be there anymore. I never liked it. That's a bad Yeah, you sure you see them. And so we want them to follow up on that. Yeah. And I wish Josh was here so we could get a time frame on some of these things, but he's not here tonight. Um, we it's asked. Next month, right? Sorry? It's coming next month. No. Yeah, well, of course, yeah, I guess he's for the bike share, he's right. coming, yeah, and and probably well, someone else, too. Fun. Be well, fun. we're going to talk about it. So, um, we asked DOT to study Amsterdam Avenue uh, from a safety and, and a possible complete streets uh, frame of mind. Um, we're still waiting on that, although I have some indication that they are doing some studies on that and will be back to us before too long. So that's at least a little progress on that. And if Amsterdam wouldn't work, another suggestion. Um, is, is there light changes that can be done? Is, does, does Amsterdam require the additional loading zones that Columbus is about to get and things of that nature? So we don't have an answer on that. The new loading zones for Columbus Avenue is a relatively recent thing, but we were told that they would probably be put in by this spring. And you know, spring has sprung, and so we'd like to know about that too. Spring's not here yet. Hello. Hmm. Um, you may recall two walking tours of the West 60s, and we recommended yeah. one or two possible additional westbound streets since everything is eastbound. That has not been acted on yet, and the residents down there are still waiting for some action on that. And there's a lot of needless cruising around because of that. Um, when do they start the training of the cross? They're going to hopefully do all of that this spring, but anybody that's been out can see that they are terribly faded. aside from the condition of the streets themselves the crosswalks are non-existent in some places and 
while that may not be the cause of, of accidents, because if you're a driver, you should be watching the road no matter whether there's a crosswalk or not, there are some indications that really brightly painted crosswalks can alert drivers a little better. I think the Gene Chambers tragedy, um, the crosswalk was very faded, which I think prevented the driver from having a clue that it was a two-way street. So I think you could very clearly, especially that, in that case, that intersection has, get, has gotten an island, right? Or has, get, has gotten the it's island already. Yeah, it's gotten the island. Yeah. 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 But, it, but it's an example of how paint is a, a strong safety yeah. issue. That and the fact that the driver wasn't paying complete attention and yeah. wasn't familiar with the streets, yes. Yeah. And he yeah. was, fought, and was right. following the car that went directly ahead of him right. and did exactly the same thing. I mean, I was, I was almost by a taxi in Brooklyn last week. Yeah. Like two weeks ago. But the good news, I mean, good news. Did you tell me that like news two months ago? Well, also? Yeah, I, but he, we was have a making, he was making a legal, he was making a legal left turn. I was in the crosswalk with my granddaughter. Legally? Legally. With, you know, the little sign that said we could cross. But unfortunately, he was going so slow that he was, you know, he stopped. And was watching the road. And, and looked up and saw, saw us. You've, you've noticed all the new. Um, LED signs along highways, along the west side yes. highway that say no texting while driving now, because they know it's a problem. But I mean, it was just, the look in his eyes was exactly the look in my eyes. He was as upset as I was, because he certainly did not want to hit them. Um, but he was going, the, the point was to, to about Gene, is that this guy was going slow enough that, that what they're doing is if they're not texting, they have their phone down in their lap, so when they look down, they look up. Yeah. So there was a news article that came out from the governor's office today, I don't know if any of you saw it on TV, that said that the crackdowns and the number of arrests or summonses or whatever for texting while driving has increased by like 51%, and they mentioned Manhattan as the borough where most of them, and that doesn't mean anything. If, they had it in trains yesterday. They were the whole thing. No, but there was 51% more than last year. That doesn't mean that it's going to be That can only be done by an officer present at the scene, correct? I think correct. Can't be done by any other means, like a camera, for instance. No. Why not? Yes, you can't prove it. Yeah, I guess. I think when Officer Marin was here the other month, he said they had captain there. That he had said that they had had some real increases in that, but yeah. most recently they had real decreases because people are starting to get the message. Yeah. But that's a good news yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 You Hopefully. want there to be zero violations yeah. issued? Hopefully, we'll see that happen along with, uh, with the state effort in the same manner. That it will increase and it'll eventually However, decrease. you may recall we had somebody here asking for a, a base, uh, for a higher base. And it was a car service that, oh, yeah. that had screens right. in the, that the driver was going to look at. I saw one of those the other day, which is a bright screen right in front of, of the passenger side on the on the front in the front of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I saw the driver staring at the screen. <laughs> so not good. Um, and yeah, I West One Hundred Six Street. Um, from Broadway to at least Columbus. Um, we brought this up with Josh, um, I think it was over five years ago, and didn't see any substantial changes. If you could just keep that in your- 106 CPW to Columbus? I, I was thinking Broadway to Columbus. Broadway to Columbus, yeah. What's the issue? Um, just car speeding, trying to make lights. Um, we constantly go, I mean, this both directions? Um, primarily going east. Probably more east. Right, more east. Um, and turning on Columbus? Well, when they go past the, the, the home life center, well, that they, big lane. Well, yeah. there's that, but there's also, I, he came out after there were three accidents right there in Amsterdam and um, at 106, and before the two um, people had been hit on Broadway at 106. Um, but just cars trying to either beat the light or jumping the light um, to get a start on things. Well, they run a red light all the time at Columbus and 106. Right. Oh, the oh, bus oh, turns. Oh, they, they run that light. They run that light all the time. You could sit there and right. 
Columbus and uh, 106. Uh, which way? Oh, coming toward east. Coming east. Coming east. Yeah, coming east. Yeah. Because when the buses are getting ready to turn or whatever, they think they actually can beat the light when it's yellow. And it's red before they get there and they keep going. I saw that. They're halfway through. Yeah, they're halfway through. Buses? Peter, uh, well, uh, I'm still you know, in the M16. Yeah, oh, but the M7 don't turn. It turns yes. on the Amsterdam. Yeah, it turns it's on the But also Peter Pan and Trailways and those big all ones all also all like, all like, all like they, that. They go through the red light like it's no big deal. It's, it's could no be big. because if you're a little bit through <laughs> to stop would cause a real right. problem. It could be that. You can't it's stop those things on a dime. Happen, yeah. yeah, but you know, they, 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 the interesting thing when you're driving and, and you've got to, you see when it turns yellow and then you make that decision not to proceed. But they do think they can make the turn. And then all the other cars, that, that's yeah. kind of a pandemic for the whole, you know. Yeah. DOT and their uh, Vision Zero plan for Manhattan for the next three years to begin 506 in Broadway as the same intersection on the side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and do we know which direction of travel is posing this threat? Is it all directions or is it specific things? It's coming east. It's got to be coming east. That's why I see Actually, at that corner, probably no. But when you get to Amsterdam, it Columbus is it's different. Yeah, okay. You get the speed of traffic. But there's conflicts with a lot of traffic coming off West End, turning right on. It's the end of West End, turning right on to 106th, mm -hmm. left on Broadway. Um, there's a lot of different lot of different turns and things that are happening there. I don't know I don't know particularly just precisely uh, what was involved in the accident. I think that's one of the things we'll ask DOT or uh or at least to do some deep dives on so we can get better and, and and Rich and is and gonna Amsterdam and, and Rich is and, and uh, we're we're gonna get um a, a, on a regular basis folks from both the two O and the two four to give us their accident locations. And that brings up actually number 14, which you don't see on this list, which I neglected to put on, which is very important, which is the sharing of data between the NYPD and DOT. And it's taking over a year, we've been told, and that it's some sort of state regulation and we've got to ask our state uh, representatives and assembly persons to get that law changed if in fact it is a law. But it's not being shared with DOT on a timely basis, and DOT is somebody that could act quickly on these problems. And it's not, from what I understood, it wasn't in a format that was easily translated. That's what he said. Yeah, he said he can. So, yeah. Roberto, it's a good thing that you know, because I'm gonna we're gonna add things as we play the moment. All right, so let's quickly move on. We don't want to be all night on these. Can add Yeah. yeah. Am I, well, adding we'll Am, I adding we'll Am I adding 106? Am I adding 106? Yeah. As well. I, I, I've got it here, and so when I redo it and submit it, I'll. But something will submit to so this. I don't this have is not to something you don't have to submit okay. it to them. Yeah, but you, you have the sharing that of that between DOT and, 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 and WPD. That's just a no brainer. Um, we also asked DOT to uh, give us some updated safety equipment, uh, safety, equipment. safety uh, statistics on the Columbus Avenue corridor. Um, now that they are adding loading zones hopefully that will ease some of the problems but there have been i think captain malin when he was here mentioned a few accidents along the columbus carter um so we, we want an update on that um dan you want to take nine um yeah we had approved a number of the nelson and i got it. we kind of went around from 96 and broadway through the number of them actually up to not including the 97th Street one so by Amsterdam in that area. Um, but we looked at several of them and had uh, looked at what had to do with either curb extensions or islands of recommendations, um, but did not particularly approve or take any position on restricted terms of those locations. And it asked DOT to look into implementing those things that they could for a matter of safety that they could do without major study, major construction, and some of those things. Um, and after that. Yeah, we did that at a couple of meetings, and we haven't heard back on any of those. Is nine and 10 are done? Yeah, they're, they're duplicate, they shouldn't be. Um, take 11. Oh yeah, um, when we had, when West End was, uh, was uh, Reconfigured, and it, it, uh, 
We had asked, we had asked them because uh, northbound traffic might need to get off toward Riverside Drive. We asked them to uh, allow allow traffic to go from the service road at 104th and 108th Street to get to the main road. And uh, Josh Benson said they would look into it to see to do that. The idea was to, if there was backup during rush hour with only the one lane, to be you know, essentially a holding area for traffic going back instead of two. Um, the backups would appear to get longer and there needed to be some other kinds of outlets. Um, and uh, both those corners of Riverside and basically have a, have a barns dance when only pedestrians can go. And they have another phase when only the service road can go and another phase when only Riverside Drive can go. And it seems like it would be safe for vehicles to be able to go from the service road to get out to um, to the main road. And actually anybody who wants to get to Riverside Drive go north has to go all the way down to 95th Street in order to be able to get there if they're looking to get there. So this is these are things that have been open before that uh, uh, and uh, in my opinion, they could actually probably allow traffic to go from main road to service road also. Same kind of thing for being able to get off the drive. There's basically no other traffic, no pedestrians moving at the time that they're able to make those moves. We asked them to look into it, and if there were to be backups on uh, the West End, um, they'd have somewhere to go. They'd have another outlet to get to. And in fact, at 108th Street, um, we've called them many, we have if there's anything but the most minimal traffic that's going northbound on Riverside Drive or uh, on service road there, the traffic backs up at least two blocks from 108th to 106th Street because there's such a short lane and the drivers are trapped and have no other way to get off the service road once they get on it uh, south of that area. So they need, they need some work to, to and was that, that figure that out. And we voted on that because I have concerns about something that would allow more traffic to ride on the service road. And if you can easily switch back and forth, I could see more cars using the service road as a conduit instead of as a service road. And also that zigzag turn. Yeah. Um, I think the visibility is not great. I'd be concerned about safety, especially at 104th in the service road. Um. <laughs> More concerned with them, you know, I would like them to be able to go from the service road to the main road. I'm not, I don't really care. Yeah, I, I'm that. just worried that if, road, if you do that, it would encourage cars to um, <coughs> to ride on the service road to try it out, and they know that they can always get back instead of the service road forcing you to go all the way to 111th. Are you worried about conflicts, or are you worried about the, um, the line of sight? I'm worried about conflicts, line of sight, and just increased traffic on the service road which really isn't meant to be a conduit, and this would turn it into a conduit. In typical fashion, the main road doesn't jam up when the service road doesn't go there. The service road jams up when the main road is relatively empty, going northbound. It's just how it is. No, when, when the main and road jams up, that's when people can see people turning off and going to the service road to get around and, and then make that one as it is. Maybe south of there, not up in the hundreds. Do you, do you find people, if, if Riverside Drive is packed Doesn't go that way. before the changes on West End, would have gone to West End? I don't know. I, I can't answer that. I, I do see when Riverside, when Riverside's jammed, you do get more traffic on the service road. Yeah. And I think we want to discourage that. And I think allowing cars to switch back and forth would encourage it. Which I think would be a mistake. Uh, you're not talking the whole way. You're talking two specific I'm locations. Two specific locations where there's an actual barn dance yeah. for pedestrians. Yeah. So there's this, where there's discrete movement of the traffic. Why don't we ask the DMT to look at it? Yeah. We, yeah. Want to, we want to look at it. It's not safe or not. We're not saying happen. just. We're saying look at it. But at this point, what happens at 108 is you see the car. You see the car back up for two blocks. There's maybe three or four at a time that can get through on the light from the service mm -hmm. road. And people start cheating on the light. They start making illegal turns there. They, they, they'll back around the corner and go up the block the, the wrong way right. to get out so of it because yeah. they're stuck for so long. That's not safe either. I used to start going that way. I would take it they've they've so bad. I'm going to But how does, how does making that, 
the well, turn. If, they, if, they, if somebody the light's still going to be the same amount of time, and the turn's going to take longer than going straight they through. They need to adjust the amount yeah. of time for what it has. Right now, all the traffic that would go through there either go straight or turns right. Mm -hmm. And if they go straight, then they go to 110th Street and they come down 110th, 111th yeah. to get on that right, yeah. or they're looking to go right or, or wherever it is. Or at this point, for a couple of years, they had the signage up there that didn't seem you could do anything and the vehicles are in the habit of getting onto the drive and have been for, for a couple of years. It used to be that they wouldn't allow that turn, but they allowed the turn of getting from the main road onto the service road. And um, after we spoke to them, they put some signage in place that they had put in the wrong place two years ago that now took this and made it worse because now it's very visible that you can't make the left-hand turn mm -hmm. to get on to, on to the drive there. Um, are we talking I think, a normal PM rush or are we talking like a summer Friday where this is a real problem? We're talking anytime there's anything more than the minimum traffic flow. Oh, so like one, an accident on the Henry Hudson could cause this. I've seen it at noon, sure. yeah. I've seen it at 11 o'clock at night. A it gets worse for things like Friday nights oh, and for the traffic. And then it gets worse on the extend, it gets worse on, on all the area. But I'm talking about times when it's absolutely light on Riverside, it's absolutely light on the West End. If it gets a little heavier that people are getting up into West End and moving down 106 to try to get to the drive to, to go north, the backup happens on that service road all the time. Okay, just I'm trying to remember when we talked about this. We didn't talk about it at committee. This was something we brought up, uh, brought up with Josh at our meeting when, the, when, we, when we had the town hall on the West End and discussed it with him. It was something that Josh Benson, who did the main design for that, um, and presented the main design, said they would they would look to try to, to try to do. It. Okay, we'll look at it if, it's, if they deem it to be a safe thing to do and something helpful. They'll do it. Um, number 12 is a result of Dan and I and Diana Howard and parents represented from the O'Shea complex and uh, representative from Councilmember Rosenthal's office experienced at 77th and Columbus between 2.30 and 3 p.m. when the O'Shea school complex empties out yeah. and the, the street is just crawling with students um, and we've had subsequent meetings about this and uh, as you probably know, um, a person who was walking their bike was hit uh, from, a, from a vehicle turning south from 77th onto Columbus. So there's too much happening there. Um, now that DOT has the ability to computerize their traffic signals by time of day, we hope that they've got, they say they're, they're just about there. We think that the, the timing of the light at 77th and Columbus has to be changed so that at least for the hour after the schools let out, there is no conflict. Uh, when you when you have the ability to cross Columbus, cars cannot come down Columbus. There has to be an all stop for vehicles there. In addition, there are there is no school zone signs anywhere approaching this yeah. school complex. We think they should be on Columbus, at least two blocks north, so between starting at 79th Street and working your way down to 77. In addition, there should be signs on the block, yeah. and there is a speed bump further down the block, and no advance notice of it except on the pavement which is of little use in a winter like we've had so we think there should be a speed bump ahead sign as well as so which will slow traffic down on 77th street, yeah. 77th street goes, goes west, west. Or but there, they've had very you know, good seven, on claremont if you've been up on, on claremont where uh, um in the 120s community board nine near columbia and they put in about three speed bumps that have been fabulous uh, and they have signs next to them saying they're there. They're painted on the street, and uh, and they may even have an advanced sign saying "bump ahead" or something like that. And it's very visible and it's uh, very effective on that block. That's that was a block that people zoomed. It's it's just a miracle that this person, this young man, who was walking his bicycle. The, the, the worst injury he got was the pedal yes. get gouged into his into his leg, and it's then he not was a broken leg. Is what you it. It was, yeah, it was just, it was just very lucky. Very lucky. Are there crossing guards? 
No, no, and we've asked for that, and Council Member Rosenthal has asked for that. And Our letter is on the website, just so you know, the letter that Andrew and your team and everyone, we went to a meeting about two weeks ago with the school, and um, they also very great. submitted a level right And that's, the, that's probably amongst the most recent things we've asked DOT for, but there, there really is not going to be an excuse if that's not done by the start of the fall oh, school in term. There's just no reason for it. It can be done and it has to be done because that's a real disaster waiting to happen. That's not even major work. No, no it isn't. Um, I think there's, I think I read there's either a bill or a request from, from the borough president's office looking to get more school guards, get more funding for the there's school guards. There was a round in the past week yep. that, was yeah. that, that, was know calling, more? That, that was calling for, so the board president with Council Member Roosevelt actually is pushing a bill that would um, increase their hours. This part of the problem is it's, it's hard to recruit school across the country. That's the short answer. Because it's a part-time job yeah. and they actually are, they're much. actually fired in June and rehired in September, so they're not eligible for health care. Um, and so there's a real quality of living issue that is, that, you know, if you're doing a dirty job, they should get paid decently and they should have decent benefits to go with. Um, so there was a rally on the city hall steps to push the bill that both wanted to increase the number of officers so that we could actually get them in places where we need them. Right. I, don't, I don't get the hiring, the hiring and the firing part because there was summer school in a lot of places. Well, and, and the, at the rally, they had a lot of statistics and for you. The, the, the lot of statistics about the number of schools that don't have any cross interest. Maybe our board should support this legislation. I, I think we love should. the idea. That's a no-brainer also. Can it come out of this committee? Yeah. Yeah. We're, 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 we're join with YM. Yeah. Uh, we could. We could. You want to wait for that, or you want to do our version of it and pass it along to YEM? Sure, if we can do it now. Or you we don't, we don't have the legislation. You have the, uh, the, the number yeah. of the bill, by any chance? I don't have it. We can call up. I think it's already going to call up the legislation. Yeah, Rich is going to do that now. Let's get the yeah, number of the bill. We're going to get the YEM and bring it up. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to step on another committee's toes. I, I'm happy to keep it until YEL does their version that we get the caucus the more. Although, I don't know what the time limit is. Yeah, on I think they have a Well, so we, we would want wording such as given the severe shortage of school crossing guards and, um, you know, and the, uh, the poor working conditions that the crossing guards are subject to and the, uh, the pressing need for more crossing guards at many school locations on the Upper West Side and throughout the borough, I guess we would probably want to say we don't want to be that parochial, right? That CB7 would support and the bill number um, and urges the, uh, the council to uh, to fund the, the cause of and, and the, and the and the staffing of school crossing guards throughout uh, CB7, or, or better words, if you can come we up with close. Because Roberta had I don't have it. Is I, there a uh, general understanding? Is there a general understanding? Nobody's right to resolution. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Some schools have two and some have zero. But some are paid by the Yeah, Amsterdam, not Broadway, I'm sorry. Amsterdam. And so that's not fair to have a school. Okay, folks, let's vote on this uh, resolution. All in favor? What's your name? <laughs> so, so this is the Crossing Guard City Council bill? Um, yeah. Yeah. Not, not committee I'm board members. It in favor? I'm not so, sure that there's a bill proposed yet. Let me, let me look it up. We're not uh, sure either. We'll, we'll get, get the resolution, resolution out of hand, Phil. Phil. Uh, yeah, I thought there was a route. I mean, I thought there was legislation that... I, I thought there was legislation they were talking about. I said there were legislation. I can call... Yeah, can't can we, we, can we simply say we support more crossing guards and all legislation that would promote... Or we encourage the city council to pass legislation. Yeah, I think we can actually drive this. Why don't we do the wording like that? Because that way, there is no bill yet. Yeah, that'll fit. Drive the about it. We yeah. encourage the city council to, uh, to pass legislation uh, increasing the, the number of additional traffic. Yeah, giving them year round reports. Yep. yep. And, 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 and benefits. And benefits. Both the year round employees. They have to get that. I think they're just calling for it. Okay. Well, I, yeah, <laughs> but, but, but okay. why should we decide if they're year round employees? We don't care if they're year round employees. We just want them to hire more and get the benefits. If that results yeah. in them being year round, that's fine. Isn't there? Right. And is it even a legislation thing if it's funded? You it? know, did you just say, did you say year round employees? We want them to be year round employees. All right, we've got, we've got, yes, sir. Are there any plans to put on future agendas for the Nelson Nygaard suggestions for West 97th Street on the requested items there. There were the other suggestions from that study, but not the 97th Street. I was just going to bring that up. Okay. <laughs> Thank but you. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that when Ken has his, uh, so wait, hold on, okay. Um, and and the, the last thing was the, um, well, actually, we got to them all. Ken, you had some additions, or okay, was that it, the Nelson Nygaard? No, yeah. that was, okay. um, first of all, uh, number four, um, I missed it initially because I, we, I think you should go back to our original resolution on the Instagram, but I think we, Actually, used the term Fleet Street. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think resolution. we did. So, so an investigation. Uh, that's what I said when I did it verbally. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't see Fleet Street. Either. Yeah. Well, so if you could, I remember. Put that in for Fleet um, Street bike lane. Um, I think the reso. We'll go with the with the wording for the reso. Yes. Okay, yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, also, um, um, I was didn't we ask now. for twenty five miles an hour on Riverside? Yes, yeah, we did. did. We did ask for that. That's good. We did. That's okay. Good. Did they change, change the sign? Yep. No, they, they actually, they, but the sign, at the time, things were changing citywide to 25 miles an hour. Right. Um, there, are parts of they, there were parts of what they hadn't put out good. there. Or they, or, I'm not sure why, but all of a sudden, signs for 30 miles an hour appeared on the other side drive. They had been there before. Or they had, they had them left over. They had worn out and they hadn't put them down. Yeah, I don't know what happened. They got out. It's been a big issue on CB9. And and, and yeah. at our request, which we have made, um, they have no problem in bringing it back to 25 miles an hour. Why right, they, they want to Which would be just taking down the signs, essentially, which would, in effect, do that um, 30 mile an hour sign. Mm -hmm. That will okay. be on our list, and that's our request. And, we'll and then on that. the 97th and the Nelson Nygaard, we, we never took up uh, 97th and Columbus. And, 97th between Central Park West and Columbus, and uh, Columbus and 100th Street. There are basically three uh, recommendations they have there, um, which we, we've never discussed. Then we need to get the study and and look at those look at those items again. Okay. Uh, and I, we can have it for the next. Uh, next yep. By the way, the school crossing guard has already been proposed. Is there a bill number or anything? Or? No, uh, funding for school crossing guards in the city's uh, 2016 budget. Ken, you're talking about 97 CPW to Columbus and the 97th and Columbus corner. Mm -hmm. Right. And then 100 and Columbus. Or between 100 and the whole block of Columbus Street, 100 right. and 97. Yeah. Wasn't, 90, wasn't 97 in Amsterdam also when we had to go down to the I think we have the next Okay. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a fairly sizable list of which we have gotten very little action thus far. So 
Um, we're going to recompile the list with the additions and the straightening out that we did here tonight. We're going to send it to everybody. And when everybody agrees that that's it, we're going to uh, send DOT uh, a request again and to urge them to move expeditiously on these items. I like the expeditious. Yeah, Morgan Freeman used it in Lean on Me, of course. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to have an expedition. Okay. So thank you all for that. No, the meeting's not over. Why is it not over? Not yet. Why? Uh, oh. yet. We, um, I just look like Kenaway. It has to be over. New stand there. Um, so is, is the applicant for the new stand by any chance present? No. Okay. So um, at this point, I think we need to do a resolution of disapproval without prejudice for the <coughs> applicant to come back and, um, and speak to us. So I so move. Okay. okay. Uh, committee members in favor? Ten. Ten. Uh, nine committee members? One. Okay, terrific. Um, now, um, Clary and her committee want to weigh in on this, but um, many of you have seen the new recycling containers on our sidewalks, and I took a picture and sent one to Penny, who thought it was fabulous, and she's been talking to the district super, and a lot of folks have problems with these cans. First of all, they are frequently opened. Yep. Garbage is flowing out there, which, which is impacting merchants, passers-by, and everybody else. Uh, they're not closed again. They're not being uh, collected in, a, in an expeditious manner. There's that word. There again. you go. <laughs> and, and they've really become kind of a health hazard. And, um, you know. I wonder they didn't collect it for two days in a row. Especially at the You couldn't believe what it looked like. I don't know if you walked by uh, 85th on the southwest corner of Columbus in the last day or two. Yep. I, but, yeah. but, I, I mean, 6 a.m. And, and Broadway and 85th. And it's it's, it's not good. Like, it's I don't know, know who designed them. Probably at 107th Street, I see them open. Is there any stuff way to, to try to have a conversation with sanitation to find out how they go about Picking it? Yeah. 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 Before, I, I think that Clark, just so you know, I think Clary, is in agreement with you on this? Well, she, but, she, she wants there to be right. recycling containers, and so do we, but there's got to be a right. better design here. But I think none of us know what this process is. We were never informed. No, my right. understanding is there is no process. I have, my understanding right. is several, yeah. that they've been removed from several neighborhoods right. and that sanitation understands they're not working. Right. And Peter, you want to add something? Just that what we're experiencing is they get picked up once a week. Oh, once a week? week. Oh, um, during that time, they're totally unserviceable by us. I mean, we get people throwing dog dirt in there. I mean, all sorts of things. I'm going to tell you something else. You know, we have this clean Love Your Tree Day coming up uh, in the 80s on, on all of the commercial avenues where people are going to clean up the, from the tree pits and mulch and, and all of that kind of thing. When people, and I've watched it, when people see these recycling containers full and overflowing, they walk a little further and throw them in the tree pit. These are bad. Can we well, get not, someone from yeah. the sanitation department yeah. to come? Well, yeah, I think I think that should be joint with um, and you know, parks and environment. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely, we, we should do that. Right. But you know, the, the thing is, that sanitation empties them out. I, I don't know. I, I don't even. I think it's more than once a week. At least when I I'm out at six a.m. in the yeah, morning with the dogs, so that's how I see them. But so sanitation comes early, and then they leave them open. And what happens Why is you've got all the dead that's around it because because you know if if if, if, it, if it bounces off the side of the, the plastic bin they don't clean, it up, they don't clean right, it up they don't clean. so they pull the thing out they leave the door the, the, the little door open and and it's and, and it's then a people mess. walk up bottles and things you know yeah go in further and people go through the regular track i mean it's really terrible there was that proposal that we were going to get the um uh compactor that they have on columbus avenue and 77th street yeah. and that was going to be used through you know throughout the city yeah and i don't know what happened with that program but that was during bloomberg so I I'm happy to, to get sanitation. So yeah. 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 Come in and speak. There's no we'll point do that with YEL. So no and it. to that end, uh, what can YEL. we do? What, can Parks we, and environment. Can we, can we do that with, can we, can we have a discussion about a much needed discussion? And I'm taking up Mark Glazer's uh, banner here. Uh, okay. 
but uh, uh, you know the learning annex and all oh, of these. These, these, the these, 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 these are despicable. These are just they're, they're filth all over all over the sidewalks. And you better, Didn't he tell us that 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 they agreed and that they were getting them away? But they, they were didn't. Remove them, yeah. But they didn't. And and I know I can tell you that there are people you know and mine you know we went talk to my neighbors where they taken uh, the learning annex and some of the other ones that have been defunct for years they've been you know bank they've been out of business chapter eleven blah 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 and they've thrown them in the um, trash can and Dio has literally taken them out and put them back on the sidewalk. Hmm. Maybe once so we have sanitation here, we can ask them what's their timetable for getting rid of these things yeah. too. Yeah. So let's let's Does try to get. know how often they pick up the regular? Trash baskets. Uh, two twice a week. The, the, for the beginning of the weekend sweet. and then the end of the toward the end of the week. Doesn't it depend on where you are? It's got to be more than that. Right. Yeah, yeah, Amsterdam and Columbus, Columbus they pick it up twice a day, yeah. except on the weekends. Twice a on day? Week. Well, Columbus Avenue has, de, uh, has the dope Dauphin. Dauphin. and that's part of it. No, they that's do. not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the. Um, the trash, the trash where you are. the litter baskets that are on the corners. Is that oh, what you're yeah. talking about? No, 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 we're not talking about that. That's what sure. I'm talking about. Oh, you're talking about are they? Well, let's, let's yeah. get Saturday those, so we can get those The litter baskets that are on the corners yeah. get picked up in the morning and then again in yeah. the evening. Yeah. Right, those. Except on the weekends. But the big containers, though, when do they pick the big containers? When do they pick those up? The big ones. The big trash cans. The ones we're talking about. The recycling cans are different. Yeah, yeah but the that's one we The ones that are near 96, they're right there when you walk into the train station. Those big cans there. They only get picked up. I've seen them like once, once a week. That would be parks, though. Yeah, you're talking about parks department property? Is that, that's parks. Yeah. Yeah. On the island where the I'm station is. Right. Those are all parks overflow. They never, they never. Well, that's a problem with parks. Yeah, I'm afraid that's parks. It's got to be addressed with parks. Okay. If you have a specific uh, service being addressed at the 96th yeah. Street station. Yeah, oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. 96th and Broadway? Yeah. Horrible on the weekend. It is overflowed with trash. When the weekend's overflowed, I think they only take them one once a day. Believe me, I hear that. There's so many people there that are disposing yeah. of stuff before they come yeah, out. Yeah, fresh fire is out and eventually it means every day. But I guess part of the problem is people are just throwing anything on them. Yeah. They're supposed to have just cans in one and I don't know what goes to it. Yeah, that's, hey, that's those. But, but the, the general the trash thing. cans, you know, the... the, the, the is there anything else they Yeah. That you find, for example, we have, uh, uh, they have a general trash but can. Quick. On the corner of 85th and Broadway, on the north and east corner, mm -hmm. and on the southeast corner, and I'm only speaking this because on the southeast corner, you have those horrible uh, of Broadway and 85th. You have the the recyclables, and so the recyclables are always open and everything, you know, and all the crap all up there. And the others are usually filled. I mean, I don't think DOS can keep up with it. Just you know, it's a population situation. And, and we live in a disposable society. So um, let's briefly touch about talk about City Bike because that's coming to us next month. DOT will be bringing us there after the workshop that we many of us attended. Um, we'll be bringing us their um, slew of locations for us to consider. Um, and when I say for us to consider, I don't know how much latitude we'll have in should we think a location is not perfect in asking that it be relocated. Um, a few feet or whatever, as the case may be. Um, I asked if if there could be consideration of stands that don't have 25 to 30 bikes for some of our locations as we're a residential yes. neighborhood. If we could have stands that hold 10 bikes, I think that's a lot more palatable to a lot of folks than a 25 or 30 bike. Block. And they said they would be looking at that. That's like the one down on 59th Street where they have close over 20 to 25 bikes? Yeah. 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 They're, they're really large a, numbers. Some look of these what they things. did to the bus village. I mean, I was just down there the other day. They're like, they take up half a block. They do. And that's where people well, used to park and live. Cars take up a whole block. Yeah, but that's good. They're cars. They're, they're parked. That's good. And they're not driving around. And, really? and, you know, well, they're driving around and looking for free parking. Yeah, you know that <laughs> yeah. we're going to get all kinds of, of blowback from folks that say, don't put it in front of a landmark building. Don't put it in front of this. Don't put it on this landmark. But I've already gotten some of those kinds of emails. So, what I assume that we're going to want to do like we do for things like newsstands and news boxes and everything is I'm going to assume that when we get the list, we're going to go out and we're going to look at them all. Yeah. I think we should do that. I think we owe it to the community. But by May, the weather should be better. Yes. Are you going to get the list? Did we get the list before the meeting? I don't know. I'm going to try to so that That's we could save some time by, by doing that. That's the only way we can do it, just by actually going out and then No, no, I think we have to go out. I don't think they're, you know, 
I think they're doing Greenpoint in Williamsburg and Long Island City first. I think that's their next um, uh, group that they're going to do. But I know they want to do Upper East, Upper West, and Harlem before the end of summer if, if they get the if they get the bikes and the stands. Um, yes. Uh, if you keep using they, is this being forced upon every residential neighborhood? In other words, there's nothing anybody can do about it. No, well, it's, it's it's coming because of what people did. A lot of people supported it. It's an asinine plan. Residential area. Hey, we it's have to look at these the places. Bus. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. So there's no, there's no voting. There's no city, saying. city Bike has a contract with the city of New York to it's expand the program. I know. Right. I think this board has never idea. approved or disapproved. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. this board has never no, I mean, approved or disapproved. Right. I, I have a motion to support right. City Bike coming into our neighborhood. Yeah, second. Yeah. 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 The community Good. really have no say. We have a seconded motion. Andrew? Yes. Is this, is this our last item? This is the last item I had, but this I, I has new business. I wanted to make some mention in terms of how the public has been able to look and choose. We had a couple of sessions where we've been able to look and they showed us some maps. And I know even looking at my own small part of the neighborhood, I found the situation very inadequate to be able to look at the things during the opportunity at that meeting. Looking to follow up, Sue, I went to look for the site. It's here you're mentioning it that it was on our site. Link to the there was a link to it. Here There's no it. link. I went and looked, and There's it's not link. there. And it's not working again. It's not did there. You, did you not see where? Was it a link that It's not work? there. I went and found it anyway on DOT. Uh -huh. And when I went and looked at the site, they have a site, and I believe it's the same map that shows you the current bike stations, and now it shows whether they have bikes, how many bikes they have, and how many slots they have open. Those That's really cool stuff. And then it has other locations where you can indicate Gee, this would be a great place for for, right. for a city bike station, right. but there's nothing that shows where anyone is anticipating putting anything, nor any opportunity for anyone to have anything other than a comment of, "Here's a great place to put something." So all of that is going to happen at the point that they present to this board for anyone to begin to get the word out to the public. None right. of the so word has gone out to the public right. to be able to make comment nope. except for. Well, two meetings on a day. Right. Of I think we're really like counting on CB7 at that May meeting for us to have members of the public who care, with, regardless of their feelings, one way or another, to come out and talk about things. And anything we can do between now and then, if they give us a design or give us a proposed location, then we as a board can do our homework and, before that yeah. meeting. And let right. me just say that as someone who was, and Ken, you were there, and you probably were there, there. Yeah. many of us. Yeah. Some of the maps were wrong. Yeah. They actually showed city bike stations in the middle of Broadway malls. So it is really important for us to go out and look at the locations they're proposing well, to make sure they even have them in the right place. If you could get them maybe next week, we could divide them up. I, I'll ask. That's all I can do. Yeah, we can, so, we can find it and take a look. But, sure. You know, I, I'm certainly hoping that there's going to be a chance for this committee to also talk about, since the city bikes are, are in inevitability, location's not the only issue here. What we're going to really Safety. want to do is talk about safety and see if we can get police officers um I, and i'm making this up you know i think that we should somehow as a committee have a, 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 a gathering of ideas on this but things like having police officers outside or traffic cops outside of senior residences senior um you know uh, senior residences where there are a lot of old people there who are the first people to complain about bikes in school Schools, the complaints that I hear the most of are the seniors. They're afraid of the bikes, can't blame them if they're afraid of it, but you know, they need to be uh, acclimated. Well, I will say one thing about the city bikes. They don't go as fast as some of the others, and they all got lights on them, so you can see them coming. Yes, sir. Um, in the list of uh, requested items from DOT, there's the plans for the Amsterdam Avenue to Street. Um, is there any sense, I know that you mentioned they were supposed to be happening soon, like the proposals they're, they're supposed to be studying um studying it. why isn't that on this list it is, it is. it's number four it's oh well, sorry well hidden just, oh i didn't even get it we asked yes there's these city bike proposals that seem oh it's getting reworded ken uh, so, i'm sorry sorry sir just want to answer this yeah um it's, it's getting, getting reworded, reworded so that it matches the wording from our resolution okay um, it's a miracle we could think of all these. Yes, sir. People are using the Columbus Avenue bike lane in the wrong direction. That's every day. 
Right. It's every day. So with city bike coming to the Upper West Side, that would probably be like an increased issue with you know either that or that kind of small Central Park West. Right. What, what, bike lane? So Sue is bringing up issues of safety that have to be looked at, and, and we have to do that. We Whether we'll get a dedicated officer in this shortage of officers, I, I can't imagine it. But if we could get at least unannounced inspections of these various places, that would be good. What safety are we concerned about that would need police? Well, where about you have senior well, centers coming at certain yeah. senior centers. So the senior centers Major often have lunch, pro lunch programs and other programs, and the seniors are crossing the streets at the times of days when when people on city bikes are riding, and many people on many people rent a city bike who are not familiar with the neighborhood. How about hey, how, how about traffic uh, the traffic issue in the bow tie? Right, the city bikes. And, and they're not, not familiar with the it. neighborhood. The they're not familiar with bike riding. How about having increased they're not enforcement? familiar with the rules of the road. How about having increased enforcement that eliminates bikes going the wrong way on the streets exactly. and riding on the sidewalks in general and makes that a change in the culture and we get enough enforcement to see that that's corrected throughout city, the this is, this is actually the benefit of city bikes coming here because study after study has shown that city bike riders tend to be much more rule followers they stop for life they don't go the wrong way so that will help create that culture that we're all looking for. They're going to follow that's the culture that's, that's around. That's slow to happen. And let me just say this, because I'm in Midtown where we had one of the first, I'm on 51st, where we had in Broadway, where we had one of the first city bike, and one of the most active city bike uh, transit hubs. And uh, we've got a lot of tourists there. But by and large, you've got commuter bicyclists there. And, and they're incredibly unsafe. And now you've got two, you, again, we've had this discussion many times, but you've also got three stakeholders who are all equally unsafe. Because you've got pedestrians who don't pay attention to the lights, you've got the bicyclists who don't pay attention to the lights, and you've got the cars that don't pay attention to the lights. The cars in that area are actually the safest because they go the slowest because there's so much traffic congestion. congestion. Mm -hmm. However, the commuter bicyclists don't stop for lights, and the pedestrians don't pay attention right. to the lights and we can complain all we like and we should complain however this is inevitable it's going to happen it's so coming. rather it's than rather change. than saying it's going to be a disaster let's say, plan for it. how is it going to be a disaster and exactly. let's do our best to make sure it's not a disaster and it is but it is a, it's a cult it's a behavioral seat so if i can get the uh, the locations um uh, yeah, we'll we'll divvy it up, and if, and if we you know get a nice day, we can go out and look at them. But, but let's, let's just remember that it hasn't been a disaster in any other part of the city where it's been launched. Nobody's been killed by a city bike cyclist, and no city bike cyclist has been killed. And I just don't want the first one to be on the upper west. Well, maybe we need a bike lane. But that has to do with the threat posed by cars, because they're the ones that are going to kill them. And if I were a city bike, yeah. Wait, if I say, were, no one no has, has ever been killed by oh, sorry, pedestrian time, time, folks. not paying attention. No one. If, if I My were, life is if I were a city bike by a pedestrian not paying attention. If I were a city bike cyclist, and I saw, really want to hear what you're saying. If I were a city bike cyclist and I saw the Columbus Avenue bike lane, I would go north on it. Because it's the safest way to go, go north. north. Why would you go because north? it's a protected bike lane. You it's safe. It. It's the safest way to And go so north. if we want to roll out the red carpet for a city cyclist, we put a protected bike lane on Amsterdam. And or that's another, a, therefore that concern. And to me, that's a specious yeah, argument because people will ride the wrong, way. the wrong way on Columbus yeah, because it's the shortest distance the to where way. they want to well, go. Not, the not because it's the safest. And in fact, you can't explain why I see people Riding the wrong way on Amsterdam Avenue downtown all the time. Well, despite the fact that only a block away they have a protected Columbus bike lane, right. they just don't go there without an enforcement. They're just not going to do well, it. We I'm don't get increased enforcement. We're going to. If, we if you build it, they will. I, we should I just ask think for it. I and just think that that's not a one note thing. There's a whole symphony of ideas we need folks, to I know, for instance, I if my sister goes to the wrong line on the corner, but that's all I'm saying. Because she, 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 she is afraid. At least it's only going to be an accident involving another bike. Can we go one at a time so I can hear you? be an really somebody pulling out, opening the door. That's, that's an it's a lot safer on the Columbus Avenue. That's what I'm trying yes. to get to. No, I'm just trying to understand it. Is, 
Is anybody going to come to you guys with a map before they go to the community board or they go to the I thought we were the community board. Yes. You know, they're coming to committee the before entire, they go to full board. The oh, no, they're definitely coming here so next next month's meeting. Next month's meeting yes. here. Here. And after that, someone in June right. to CD7. Right. That's correct. It's not entirely sure that that they need community board approval for this. They would like it, and for that reason, I would like us to go and inspect the sites. And if there's a, a little glitch in it, we, we might make it better. That's all. I was just trying to understand this. So like presumably, we're going to get the presentation in May and then go down in June? Hopefully. You, would get, you said you were going to charge the sites before that, though. If, if I can get the locations yeah, prior right. to the May meeting, right. I'll, I'll divvy them up and I'll, I'll ask who wants to take, you know, these, these. Hey, they'll act fast on it. I mean, I know it's not yeah, easy well, because it's only We're not going to delay it unnecessarily. So we got guys, the good weather now. Yeah, but I mean, just saying, you know, it might so be the nice. type of thing where we find out about it and if people only have a few days notice to get all out right, there. Just let me know. I'll be so yeah, I think we'll all. Yeah, Howard. Oh, I agree with the concern with bikers going the wrong way, but maybe we as a committee could come up with a, a safe, Northbound route, a safe recommended northbound route, then to discourage. Well, we have a resolution that yeah, asks them what to look at. I don't think it's Central Park West is not safe. It's, it's not the most dangerous. North it's it's real. And also, Actually, I don't know why they how they designed it that way because I have the park cars in the lane should be reversed. Like, I don't. It's not 100 safe. But Ellen Rosenthal has already made a proposal for right. Amsterdam. We know. Avenue. We know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. We know. Yeah. That's really what these guys are trying to get at, and so it's not. It's already on the list, and it's not race through. We're getting. Yeah. We'll get there. Well, do any of you, you know, I'm sorry to play devil's advocate. Do you see a problem in heaven with Citibank? Look, like, Citibank. Citibank City also. Bank as well. <laughs> what was Citibank? Different problem. Bloomberg <laughs> thought <laughs> that by <laughs> infusing bikes into our culture, he was going to get rid of vehicles. He has not gotten rid of one single vehicle. Well, you are doing you nothing. Say that. Or they are doing nothing but overcrowding our neighborhoods. No one's You're proposing gonna getting rid of vehicles. You're going to have bikes in the street with a lot of people that don't know how to handle traffic rules. You're going to have cars in the street not reduced. You're going to now compress another street so that you're going to have even slower moving vehicles. That's and, good. More, and you're going to have more pollution. There is a, a case. There's some problems associated. There is a case right now in the Supreme Court to stop all of this because no environmental studies were done. And what you're doing is causing greater pollution. I mean, do you see that? It's simple elementary science. Okay, Roberta, thanks. And these people are pushing this stuff on us, and I know that there's very little we can do about it, but it's a bad, failed plan. Yes, it's a disaster. We are not Hong Kong, and we are not London. And we don't have the broad boulevards of Paris either. Exactly. I know. And most of the people Except in Paris, when I'm there, are on motorbikes, they're not on bicycles. And this is a bad, bad idea in a residential area. But it's coming, sir. I understand. Yeah. I know that. I'm going to interject here because, you know, I, I, I'm in Midtown. I'm on 8th Avenue. That's a mixed care, That's a mixed use area. You've got mm -hmm. a lot of residential there, and you've got a lot of businesses there. And that northbound bike lane uh, between the, in the, you know, from the early 40s all the way up to the that's been very successful. There. It's amazing how that great a, that bike that, lane That is. bike lane just yeah. works. Yeah. Unlike the one, by the way, on Broadway, where you've got all the tourists. Well, the hopefully theater. everyone will say that about the, the Upper West Side. When, hopefully, when well, yeah. And the Amsterdam The thing is, you know, it's <laughs> going to have to work. And, and again, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm I, I keep stressing. It's going to, there's going to be a collective behavioral or whatever you want to call well, it. The culture change. Change. And we have our work cut out for us. We're, and we have a, a really jam-packed next meeting, too, if we get all the speakers that we're trying to get. So thank you all for uh, tonight. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Those kids were like Kids were great. Very yeah. cute. <laughs> if this were London, there wouldn't be any question that there would be a blue plaque on the house. Yeah. They have a whole system of blue plaques all throughout the uh, for London. Elizabeth, sorry, do you have any idea of the status of getting all of the streets that we've quoted for secondarily named on the on the website to yes. with some info about each of these honorees? Yes, and I think that John was starting that project. Oh, great. Great. Okay. Have a good evening, gentlemen. Thank you.